Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, proof that gun violence can happen to anyone at any time. What the family of a city council member believes led up to Roanoke's latest homicide. For some of us today, temperatures made it into the 70s. However, colder air, not far away. We'll let you know when highs will drop into the 40s and 50s. Plus, we'll let you know when the winds will pick up again. Making sure kids experience the joy of Christmas, the urgent plea being made during a challenging season of giving. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Brittany McGraw. I'm John Carlin. Another Roanoke family devastated by gun violence. Today we learned one of Roanoke's council members was personally affected by a deadly weekend shooting. Councilman Robert Jeffrey Jr.'s brother-in-law, Clayton Williams, was shot and killed Sunday morning. Within the past hour, 10 News sat down with Jeffrey and his wife, William's sister, Bettina Jeffrey, Bettina Jeffrey says someone took her brother's life while he was walking to his car on Williamson Road. She says her brother's girlfriend was with him at the time of the shooting. From her account, Williams had had a disagreement with the shooter weeks before. The girlfriend says he thought the issue was resolved. Tonight, the Jeffrey family is pleading with people to put down their guns. Can't come back from bullets. You can't. And you're not just getting the person that you're aiming that gun at. You're killing families. You're breaking people apart. Roanoke police say no arrests have been made in the case. Hear more from the Jeffries about what kind of action they want to see taken to stop this kind of violence coming up tonight at 11. And tonight, a fallen hero will be laid to rest. Loved ones and law enforcement officers are gathering in Wiles, Wise County to honor and remember Michael Chandler. The 29-year-old died in the line of duty this weekend after nearly four years with the Big Stone Gap Police Department. Those who knew him called him a loving father, husband, brother, and friend. He was serving his town in a heroic way. Um, the life of a police officer, you know, is it kind of alternates between moments of boredom and, and some of the most dangerous moments on earth. And just God bless people who are willing to serve like Officer Chandler. And my thoughts go out to his family. Governor Ralph Northam is asking flags to be flown at half staff tomorrow from sunrise to sunset to honor Chandler. The funeral will start in just about an hour. New details tonight on a high-profile case. A date has been set for the jury trial of a suspended Virginia Tech linebacker. Issa Meminatute is accused in the fatal beating of a tender match. His trial is set to begin in May. As we've reported, Atute is accused of killing Jerry Smith, a man who he mistook for a woman. Police say that when Atute made the discovery, he allegedly beat Smith to death. And Roanoke doctor will spend the next three years in prison for overprescribing opioids. Investigators say Vernal Lewis made more than a half million dollars after continuing opioid prescriptions month after month and upping dosages without medical justification. Lewis did plead guilty to the charges that she faced and also agreed to surrender her medical license. Turning out of the forecast, we're seeing a temperature roller coaster. Yes, that's a very good way to describe what we've been feeling with these temperatures. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich is here to show us some of the big changes that we can expect over the next few days. But we do get one more day of super nice weather, right? We do. Temperatures tomorrow lower 70s, and much of the day tomorrow is dry until very late when the chance for rain will increase, especially into the mountains. But for now, things are very quiet, and it's going to stay quiet all night long. A good night to spot the International Space Station. It will be visible for about three minutes beginning at 637 this evening. You want to look to the south southwest sky and look for a fast non blinking object flying across the sky and that will be the ISS patio forecast for this evening. Fair skies pleasant temperatures start in the upper 50s to near 60 at 7 falling into the low to mid 50s by 11 or midnight. What we're tracking here the warm up continues for one more day Thursday temperatures similar to today. However, a front will bring in rain and then cooler air and then wind. And in addition to that, we'll be watching another cold front that's going to be pushing in early next week, which will bring us a reinforcing shot of cold air. Moral of the story here is this. If you like the warmth, enjoy tomorrow because after that temperatures plummet. Brittany. 
The Salem community is remembering the life of a beloved teacher. Randy Brinkley passed away unexpectedly on Saturday. The Salem High School principal tells us he touched so many students' lives and helped create a home for many of them through the robotics team. One of his students says he's now considering majoring in mechanical engineering in college, in part thanks to Brinkley. My brothers went to engineering and they had Mr. Brinkley too, so that kind of inspired me too. I think he inspired all of us. The Brinkley family will have a reception in his honor this Saturday, November 20th from 2 to 4 at the VFW 4902 in Daleville. Cleaning for the World will be honoring an employee with a special toy drive. Steve Bryant spent 19 years driving trucks for the Concord-based nonprofit, delivering donated goods and toys to those in need. We're told Bryant died in a motorcycle accident while riding to work earlier this year. The organization sent a special shipment of 25,000 toys to children facing poverty or natural disasters in his honor. Bryant's family was on hand to load the truck Tuesday and installed a plaque on his office door. Gleaning for the world wouldn't be what it is without him and uh, having that plaque on his door is just uh, the best way we can do to, to honor his memory. We're told in lieu of flowers, Steve's family has asked people to donate to Gleaning, which they will then use toward new toys. The Salvation Army Angel Tree helps provide Christmas gifts for kids in need, but it seems there are fewer donations for the program this time. And as 10 News reporter McKinley Struther explains, this is concerning because the need has more than doubled. The Salvation Army in Rockbridge County hopes you'll decorate your holiday with joy by helping children in need. I'm sure the kids are very excited to have toys and clothing underneath their Christmas trees. But right now, gifts are few under the angel tree and tags are plentiful, meaning they need your help. I guess with COVID and all that, people that lost their jobs, not able to provide for the children. Major George Hackbarth says the amount of kids in the Rockbridge County, Lexington, Buena Vista area applying for the angel tree program has doubled since last year. That's 206 kids. Each child gets an angel tag, and on the angel tag is the child's just first name, their gender. Then there's like clothing sizes, shoe sizes, and a wish lists of some of the toys. The Salvation Army Tree programs in Lynchburg and Roanoke areas just got underway this week. The New River Valley, yours kicks off this weekend. Hackbar says even if you can't do it alone, Make it a group effort. And maybe it's a church group can get together and do one or two angels or a civic club or, you know, neighbors get together. So, um, you know, just however, you know, people want to help us out, we would definitely appreciate it very much. You can help them do the most good by filling up this box or picking a name off of the angel tree. You can do that through the middle of December. In Rockbridge County, I'm McKinley Struther, 10 News, working for you. Items have to be new and unwrapped when dropped off. Most programs end in mid-December. A new business in downtown Roanoke, the retail space perfect for holiday shopping that, that's also budget friendly. Plus, aspiring aviators, the new program that's taking flight at the Roanoke Blacksburg Regional Airport. Southwest Virginia is known for having some amazing breweries, and now you can add one more spot to the list. Bryant's Farm Brewery is set to open in Nelson County Saturday. As you can see, it has some gorgeous views. Bryant's is the maker of a fan favorite, the Unicorn Fuel Hard Cider. The first two beers making their debut this weekend are a light, hoppy American wheat beer along with a malty brown ale. A new home decor shop is open in downtown Roanoke. The ribbon cutting for the French farmhouse took place this afternoon on Church Avenue. The shop is between the city market and Mass General Store. Inside, you'll find rustic yet elegant decor, including lighting and furniture. The place is owned by a Franklin County native, Ashley Lawson, who says she's focused on making the store affordable. Really, this is my style to a T. <laughs> and so when I was shopping around the area, you know, there's only like big box stores and then, you know, boutiques that are more colorful. There's something here for everyone. I'm trying to make it very approachable. Lawson plans to launch another business upstairs to host events. It will be called Rendezvous. 
You are looking at a live picture from our Liberty University Skycam overlooking Lynchburg and of course the campus of Liberty University and it's all very quiet in and around Campbell, Appomattox, Bedford and Amherst counties. We will let you know when rain chances though increase and when the winds pick up coming up. A new push in recruiting the next generation of aviators took students to the skies across the Star City today. New at 6 tonight, 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder joined in on their ride to show how one organization is sparking their interest in flight. Any ideas what that could be? Maybe that they're turning. More than 100 students from the Roanoke Valley are getting a first-hand look at a career in the skies. Try to build on their career paths before they decide who they want to be because, unfortunately, uh, there's a, uh, such a lack of diversity in aviation. Dynamic Aviation's Next Gen Aviators program allows middle school students across Virginia to get a hands-on experience in everything that engineering and aerospace has to offer. Each station features a new challenge or experience those in the field could see every day. Most of us, when we think of aviation, we tend to think of the pilot, maybe the mechanic, the gate agent, the flight attendant, and there's so many other career uh, aspects that, that support aviation that are key to aviation. They even let us join a group of students for a quick flight around the Star City. For most of the students here on our flight today, it's their first time ever on a plane. Organizers say it's one of many ways to get them involved in aviation on every level. But it's not just about fun for the group. They also hope by introducing students to the variety of options in the industry, it creates more diversity for women and people of color, something Roanoke native Kayla Dugan is especially passionate about. We're just excited to show them, you know, maybe if they have someone that they can look up to that looks like them, you know, they'll think, hey, I can do that too. Even if the students choose not to follow the footsteps of the program, those running it hope they can continue their mission to open doors for students in the STEM field as much as possible. We know that not every station is going to speak to every single student, but we really think that, hey, there might be something here that really clicks with one, you know, one student. Annie Schroeder, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. Whole lot of sunshine today, very warm for us today. A tad breezy at times towards the mountains, but outside of that, it was just a gorgeous day to be outside. You'll notice to the west, though, more rain, more clouds. That's our next weather maker. That's a cold front that's going to be swinging through here beginning around this time tomorrow. And it is going to increase our rain chances just a touch as we head into late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Now I will tell you that the morning hours are dry. The early afternoon hours look dry, but once we get beyond about four o'clock, that's when that chance for rain will start to go up. I think the wettest time for us tomorrow will come in the evening, roughly between about 6 p.m and about 8 p.m. Once we get closer to midnight, that chance for rain goes down, cold front leaves, and skies start to clear out again. Now, temperatures on Thursday are going to be in the 70s, lower 70s. That's about 10 to 15 degrees above average. The average high at this time of year is in the upper 50s, so it's going to actually feel more like early to mid-October outside for us come tomorrow. Temperatures tomorrow similar to what we had outside today, and today was no doubt a very, very beautiful mid-November day. 65 right now in Roanoke, 64 in Lynchburg, 66 in Danville, 58 in Hillsville, Galax, and also into Hot Springs. Now, behind that front that impacts us here tomorrow, we turn much colder by Friday. So by the time those high school football games come into play for us Friday evening, you're going to need the jacket. You're going to need the hot cocoa. You may even need a hat and gloves. But one thing you won't need, the umbrella. Once this front gets out of here, high pressure builds in. So we're going to be completely dry for those high school football games Friday evening. We're just going to be quite cold. Maybe even a little breezy as well. And then we're going to be watching another front head into our neck of the woods as we head Sunday night into Monday morning. That next front is going to bring us a reinforcing shot of cold air. It will also bring us the chance for a little bit of rain and perhaps even as we head into Tuesday of next week, the chance for some West Slope snow showers. Strong wind will also come into play for us early next week. And I already told you about that reinforcing shot of cold air. We're looking at highs on Tuesday of next week in the 40s. That's it. So as we look ahead, Obviously, you know we're going to turn colder here this weekend into next week. Looking even into the end of November, it looks like we're going to have temperatures still at or below normal with a lot of the heat staying to the west of us. Now, eventually, 
that heat will try to make its way farther to the east. Now for tonight, we are not too chilly outside. Fair skies on tap. Overnight lows roughly between 43 and 51. For tomorrow, clouds roll in. Certainly could have the chance for some passing showers in places like the Highlands, New River Valley, Mountain Empire as soon as 3, 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I think the rain will hold off until the evening for areas farther to the east. High temperatures tomorrow in the mountains, 60s to near 70 outside the mountains, 70 to 75. Your extended forecast. Oh, a temperature roller coaster if I've ever seen one. Lower 70s Thursday. Thursday, lower 50s Friday and Saturday, middle 50s Sunday and Monday, 40s on Tuesday, back into the low to mid 50s by Wednesday. We will have the chance for a little bit of rain here as we head late tomorrow into tomorrow evening with another chance for rain Sunday night into Monday morning. And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. Uh, I knew they would be ready for us and that they would be out to get us and excited to have us here on their home court. Because um, I think the last three seasons, last three volleyball seasons we've ended their their season um, but my girls were ready they were up for the challenge I'm so excited uh, and not just Kate but all the seniors they've worked hard and for them to have that opportunity is, is great Rustburg back in the state final after a down to the wire five set thriller in the state semifinal with Hidden Valley last night. The Red Devils are the defending class three champs from the delayed fall into spring season and they head into Saturday state finals 26 and 0. Here are the matchups three local squads vying for titles. Auburn has a 73 match win streak going and they'll go for their third straight title. Glenver will play for its first state title since 2006 and it is Rust versus Tab in the 3A final. Well, the area has lost a legend today as a former William Fleming coach and principal passed away. George Killa Miller coached for 26 seasons at William Fleming, five as head coach. Uh, his tenure included a trip to the 97 Division V state championship game. He also was a longtime head wrestling coach. His career of service for Roanoke City Public Schools spanned 35 years, including 14 years as Hall principal at William Fleming. The William Fleming Field was dubbed Miller Field in his honor. He's a 2010 inductee into the William Fleming Athletic Hall of Fame. He was an All-State 3A defensive end in 69 for the Colonels and is in the Elizabeth City State University Hall of Fame as well. Well, Virginia Tech heads to Miami this weekend with an interim coach in charge, while the Hurricanes will welcome them with a coach on the hot seat as well. The crosshairs are squarely on Coach Manny Diaz after Athletic Director Blake James parted ways with the school late last week. The loss to Florida State followed, so the Canes are just 5-5, five and five, and Diaz fielding questions this week about his possible departure. I mean, look, since, since we started the way we started, um, you know, I think all of us in this program have had to just focus on, on one-week missions. Um, and by doing that, um, you know, we won three games in a row, had a chance to win a fourth game that we didn't finish. Um, and I think that's the same thing this week. You know, there's a mission. The mission this week is to beat Virginia Tech. Um, that's all we can control. Indeed, Virginia Tech women hosting Coppin State. Kyler Murray reportedly close to returning for the Cardinals, and the Maroons have a doubleheader tonight. <laughs> Coming up on NBC Nightly News, Justice for All. This is a live look from the NBC control room where Lester Holt is working on a story called That's Giving Hope to People Jailed as Juveniles. That's up next.